welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, Podcast, where we give motivational and inspirational tips about life, small business, wisdom, health, wealth, finance, relationships. relationships. It's about being the best, best you that you can possibly be. Possibly be, 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 be. Hashtag Untrapped. Welcome, well, welcome to the Untrapped Podcast. 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 I am your host, Keith Kelfus. Window cleaning, window cleaning, window cleaning, inside and outside versus just outside only. I'm making this video because I want to ask you, I've talked to quite a few different window cleaners that I've met at conventions and primarily window cleaners who, who mainly do pressure washing and window cleaning say that they don't clean the inside of the windows for the customers. And they're like, heck no, that's too much liability. We ain't going in nobody's house. We just stick to the outside dog. And I'm making this video to ask you, what do you do? Because it never even occurred to me. What's up service industry coach, Matt Smith in the house. Yo, it never even occurred to me to not clean the inside of people's houses. We've been cleaning the inside and the outside since I started doing it six or seven years ago. And I just think it's more money. I don't know. So I wanna know what you think in the comments below and why, why don't you want to? And interesting thing is if you're uh, by yourself, of course, there's nothing to worry about or you and your right-hand man. Obviously, if you have employees, you want to put them through a background check and a drug screen, even if they were just working for a couple of weeks or even a subcontractor, you'd want to run a, you know, at least a background check on them before you have them in anybody's house because the liability is off the hook. So I understand very, very implicitly that letting unqualified people in your client's homes is extremely just bad business. How about that? But it never occurred to me. So I was very curious. And you're leaving too much money on the line, not doing insides and too many customers want them done, says Matt Smith, service industry coach. If you don't offer insides, you're going to lose a lot of deals. Very smart. I like what you said, Matt. That makes perfect sense because you're just looking at the math and the data says you're leaving way too much money and opportunity on the table. So when you just look at it for what it is, you just answered a whole bunch of questions right there. I think uh, my buddy DJ, DJ Carroll, he, they don't go inside of houses. And so anyways, we are about to get absolutely swamped with window cleaning. We have a lot right now going on, but because we do landscaping and window cleaning and now the wave is coming hard and we're in Michigan. So not only all the regular clients, but all the new clients. And then also with our marketing campaign, lots of clients. We've raised the price, like I said in the last video, a few videos ago, to $299 minimum to even show up on the property. I want $299 bucks, right? Now, that rule can be broken. A lot of people think about this stuff. And I heard Luke, the window cleaner, the other day, uh, I saw a video where he was saying, yeah, but what if the neighbor wants it done, wants something done, and it's literally right there, and it's 100 bucks? You're not going to turn that down. So that's when I think the rule should be broken, is when it is very convenient. But convenient money sometimes has a snare. It's a bear trap in disguise. So after, I think, being pissed off and going through so many frustrations, in any small business, you kind of get to the point where you get really clear about, you know, you know, cause you have to make your margins no matter what, you know? So that's what I wanted to say. Also, I want to know what you guys think. I've been trying out house call pro for booking and uh, running my business. I think it's really, really cool. So I want to know what you think about that. Luke, I was just talking about you, man, how you're talking about breaking the rule. What's your thoughts on gutters, John Smalley? We only do walkable houses. When I first started window cleaning, we got into gutter cleaning. I found myself up on some two and a half story roofs with pitches like this, terrified of whether or not I should lie to the customer and said I did that section when I really didn't do it. And I couldn't get myself to lie to a customer 
So literally going down, feeling like a complete ass hat, telling the customer, oh, I did everything except for that little bit right there because I couldn't get it. And it's like so high, I didn't have like $500 to go or, or even want to invest in a, so in a ladder to do something that high. And then I've also taken on gutter cleaning jobs since you've asked where, you know, we managed to clean out all the gutters, but then the customer wanted all the little tiny microscopic stuff flushed out with a hose. So now when we do gutters, we say we only do walkable roofs, one stories, if it's a two story walkable or a split level, it has to be walkable. We don't sit there by hand and clean it all out. If you do, it's a, it's an extra charge. It's going to be double. And we just blow it out with a backpack blower all over the place, blow it into a pile, take a rake and a tarp, clean up whatever we did. Now, if I, if it's obvious, if I go up there and it's just pure shit and slop, I'm not going to blow that all over a customer's house. It's common sense. It's faster to just pick it up, but we're not like the white glove tuxedo of gutter cleaning, you know? It's $150 for a one-story walkable ranch to blow out the gutters and downspouts. We blow out the gutters. We blow the downspouts up and down. We're donezo. It's $250 for a two-story, like a bigger house, and then so on and so forth. It used to be $35 when I started. I was smoking rocks, bro. <laughs> then it went up to $85, and now it's just $150, or I don't even want to do it. And I turn down houses all day for gutter cleaning. What windows do you want clean on the inside? Best question. Because not everyone wants their windows clean on the inside. Interesting. Luke in the house. Jonathan Graham. What up, though? What up, JP? HubSpot. Email marketing platform. We use the MailChimp email marketing platform. And we're using also using a voicemail broadcast. I'm going to drop that as soon as I get back from Chicago. I'm leaving for Chicago tomorrow for aquascape academy but reputation management software to manage online reviews no we tried a signpost we were on and yodel dumped all that and i manage all my own stuff but i don't use the software one other thing i want to talk about while i'm here is i'm really fascinated with the automation of sales and marketing and so here's what's going on google is god of the internet we all know that so Google is the god of the internet, obviously. And when you have a Google ads campaign, you're getting as many positive reviews as possible. You have a way of getting the positive reviews and setting it up so it's automated. So the customer, you're getting as many positive reviews for every single customer as possible. Like I'm almost under the impression that if you did a job, obviously making money makes sense, but if that job didn't have some type of social media content, pictures posted somewhere, or some type of positive review that happened, then it's almost like in today's world, like it didn't even happen. If you don't have some type of token to take away with you, like a silver coin, I, I collect silver coins, I love silver eagles, right? If you don't have something to take with you, or to show, to quantify that, as marketing or something that's almost like you didn't do it or if you don't set that customer up on a quarterly plan or or find a way to get get their email address and market to them it's just like you just pissed away all that time and energy taking care of that customer so how do you leverage that to work for you so instead of hiring a company to do your your seo for you i believe that it should be brought in in-house unless the company that works for you is some type of freelancer or somebody that you make sure you keep everything that you do with them and then they don't become the guardian of the black box, right? And also to understand what they're doing. So I really believe in learning internet marketing and white hat SEO techniques is really important because you could hire a company that's doing black hat stuff and that could demote you in the search engines and the Google ranking, like search engine ranking page. I'm thinking, so back into the marketing thing, cold hard spending cold hard money on our marketing and advertising drilling deep on specific areas not wide but deep and starting with the cheapest things first which are you know this is where exactly where i want to come on with a service industry coach because he's really good at google ads and doing the eddm because we do uh sun gym uh postcard bombs and then now we're doing a sly broadcast uh ringless voicemail we do email marketing and then i mean besides for that google adwords facebook 
I spent a little bit of money on Facebook ads and then just posting a shitload of content and then Google's posts. So Google My Business now, if you have the app on your phone, allows you to create those posts. Like I legit think you should be making a post minimum a week, once a week, but literally every 72 hours putting out a brand new post with a picture of your work, a well-worded headline with good copy and an ad and a call to action, a CTA, an offer that gets them to pick up the phone and call you, turn on messaging on your phone so customers can get you get to you quickly. And then when you're making posts, it's going to show up on Google before other people. If you have more content out there, more SEO rich organic content, I'm hiring a blog post article writer right now. And she's starting to write the blog post articles for my landscaping and window cleaning. And if it works, she's also going to do it for my social media. She has like a master's degree in journalism and shit. So if you're putting out local blog posts that are creating you as a trusted authority in your marketplace, and then... Mark, Mark, getting just getting your business the frick out there more than anybody else because all these other companies are are catching on and they're doing social media marketing. They're on Facebook. They're posting stuff. They're starting their YouTube channels and and, and to get into the the Google three pack, which is I mean aside from paid ads, there's only three listings that people can see above the fold when they're looking on their phone or on their desktop computer for a window cleaner near me, right? And I think that you absolutely have to be on that. Hootsuite. I just downloaded the Hootsuite app. Anybody here got so many apps on your phone that you're like, oh, that's dope. Advertising at the movie theater. I thought about that. I don't know about commercial customers. Dude, I do not get a lot of commercial properties. I got a restaurant right now that wants me to clean their windows opening up right now. And I told them $850 to clean the windows at the restaurant. And they were like, Pfft. No. <laughs> so ringless voicemails, Greg Chisholm. So basically, here's the way it works. There's a bunch of different services. Listen to me closely. I should make a whole video on ringless voicemail. I spent four hours straight scrubbing my contact list of 4,500 customers that we've taken care of. I scrubbed it all the way down to a list of 770 people. So you record a pre-recorded into your phone and you say uh, for instance listen listen to me clearly hi this is keith with kelfis window cleaning the reason i'm reaching out and calling you today is because i'm uh looking at our records and it shows uh, we've done some work for you in the past and the spring is rolling around so if you're looking to have your windows clean um just letting you know our schedule is filling up kind of fast so we're, we're you know, putting some urgency in there and we're looking to see if you wanted to book to get your windows cleaned again um can you you know give us a call here's my phone number or you can call me reach me keith at calfaservices.com and let's get you on the schedule and get get you taken care of okay thank you boom if it sounds good you upload it into the ring ringless voicemail software after you export all your Google contacts via CSV and bring them into a spreadsheet, scrub them out, and then you export all the phone numbers, upload them into the Ringless voicemail software. Now you have 700 people that you've, you know, numbers you have, and now you can set it Wednesday at 3 p.m. Boop. What happens is 700 people's phones ring and then but their phone doesn't ring it might ring a half a ring but it goes straight to voicemail and then they check their voicemail and then they get that message and they think it is from you they think it's from you like just you but they don't know that you made that message for 700 people what well, here's what happens when you do that your phone rings off the hook like i am gonna lie right now i'm scared i'm scared I'm literally scared. I've got it preloaded and locked. I bought all the credits. I've got it all ready to go. All I have to do is press one button and 770 people are gonna get called. Our phone's already ringing. I got a secretary. I'm about to hire a calling service right now. Maybe Jill's office. I heard the Sid Graf's squeegeology talked about uh, Jill's office. There are professional phone answering girls that pick up the phone and they, uh, I just wanna make sure they can close jobs over phone, like with Google Earth. Yeah, so my bottleneck right now is I'm so deep into my internet business and social media that I'm like running two businesses at the same time. So that's where I'm a, a little bit time trapped. What do I like about Signpost? I thought Signpost was awesome. 
truthfully, but it's been years since I used it. I can't tell you the name of the software. Go to Sun Gym and get the voicemail bomb, dog. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, that's how you get it, Greg. Okay, so the the next thing is um, there's something I want to ask you guys. Do any of you have a window cleaning van that's set up, obviously strictly for window cleaning? Since I do landscaping and window cleaning, I have a truck, and then when I keep all my window cleaning gear in my garage. It's a pain in the ass loading up the water-fed pull system and all the window cleaning gear into the truck and then getting to the job site and realizing that I forgot something in my garage. So I have two trucks right now, and I'm thinking about selling one and buying a van and just dropping the money and getting it like vinyl wrapped or some decal lettering and that being the exclusive window cleaning van. Uh, we do a lot of window cleaning, and I'm really thinking about doing that. The amount of packages to supply, three or more. You know, I'd say three. Right now, I'm just trying to upsell the customer on everything that I see while I'm there. So I don't have a package printed out yet, and I have to get on top of that. I've got too many irons in the fire, but that's beautiful. I saw a package by Bobby... Journey of, Journey of a New Entrepreneur, Bobby Walker. So his sheet, his quote sheet, had every single service that he offered, you know, uh, power washing, window cleaning, uh, driveway, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, everything, right? And then he would have it all and he would just check it all off and put the totals and then a grand total at the bottom so they know what they would get. And then I look at somebody like when I was at the Automate Girl Cell Conference I don't know if it was Joshua Latimer or Brandon Vaughn, but they have the three different package, the whole enchilada at the bottom, and then the mid-grade package, and then the basic thing that they asked for plus one other service. This is really working for us right now, and I don't know why I didn't see this sooner. And if you guys that don't know what we're talking about right now, it's that when you offer packages to your customers, your average ticket price goes up immediately. So our average ticket price went up from $650 up to, it fluctuates between 960 and 1150. So we're sitting at about a thousand dollars average ticket price. Now I do landscaping and window cleaning, so don't like freak out if you're like, in window cleaning? No, hell no. But yeah, dude, if you guys don't see that, I'll put a link below this video after. There's a video I did with Bobby Walker. Fast forward the video into like seven minutes in. Dude, he gives some freaking golden nuggets about his five-star review process and packages. It's really good. Bobby Walker's a guy who's doing 350 grand in his business within 24 months. He just got it dialed in because he's really paid attention to what the guys that are winner, winning are doing. But the packages thing is, if every single time you go to a customer's property and they ask for one thing, you don't walk in with blindfolders on like blindfolds and look at one thing you look at everything else now inherently you would want to do this but you'd stop doing it because it's so time consuming but if you just like slow down and say okay i see you want this done but literally just quote them for it and say hey do you want this 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 and this we can do give you the whole enchilada for a package deal offer them more services if you do more things or more to be done on their property and if they if they like you they're gonna they're gonna say yes or they're gonna invite you back to do more work so i've learned something about success and money and this is i'm making more money uh this year than last and then the year before as well because of this one thing uh and i'm not saying i'm the guy to listen to but this is working for me i never looked at it this way people who make more money are doing one specific thing that other people who don't aren't. All they're doing is making more offers more often. Making an offer. If you bake a bunch of cookies and you keep them in your house and you don't ever tell anybody, you know, do you want a cookie? <laughs> Nobody is ever gonna get a cookie. If you went up to like a crowd of people and you said, hey, one person, you want a cookie? They might say yes or no. Three people, one of them will say yes and they'll take a cookie. But if you're going up constantly to 150 people a day saying, you want a cookie? Fresh baked chocolate chip cookies, you want a cookie? You want a cookie? You don't want a cookie? You want a cookie? 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 
like 30 or 40 of them are going to say yes. If you're always getting your marketing message out there and you're constantly meeting with customers and picking up the phone and making them offers on social media, through the phone, through, and you're just making offers everywhere you go to give people valuable service in exchange for money, the more offers you make. You're, so when I say make an offer, you're making an offer, which means you're making somebody an offer to transact with you in exchange You give them a valuable thing, a product or service in exchange for currency, for money. Hey, you want to buy this thing? Hey, you want to buy this thing? Hey, you want to buy this thing? You do that more and more and more and more often, more people are going to say yes. And then once you have so many leads coming in, you can actually expand the top as you dissolve the bottom, which means you can like raise your prices because now, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Now you can be choosy because you have so many damn people that want to transact with you now you can move work your way upstream very interesting my thought on jack of all trades master of none that's like was me dude i was doing everything for a dollar i was so scared and so desperate uh when i started dude i was doing everything so yeah i think it's really stupid if you have a whole bunch of different like equipment and all these things like you're trying to do painting and now you're doing power washing let's get in the house cleaning let's do this like bro i know i do landscaping and window cleaning like the only reason it works for us is we have so many clients that want both now but we, you know it kind of worked out perfect for me but it's going to be a hassle doing window cleaning and pressure washing <laughs> Casey Lee, dude, have you seen John Lang? Dude is on fire with his pressure washing. Oh, dude, I got to check him out. He was commenting on my stuff earlier. Window cleaning van setup. Yeah, man. Is that Peter Cavallero? If that is, we got to get on the phone Monday, bro. I got an issue. I got to try to work it in somehow because I'll be in Chicago. It's been crazy the last two weeks. And I'm sorry. My secretary was on vacation and my wife was sick. So I've had an insane last couple of weeks doing literally everything around my house, my family, running a business and working and answering the phones. I've gotten no sleep in the past three weeks starting my own franchise. Okay, so I think that's about it. I'm not going to keep you guys on here so long. Oh, yeah, the thoughts on Jack of Trades, Master of None, Squeegee Brothers. Kid who worked for me when I uh, back in the day, and he became a friend, and he had the entrepreneur seizure, and he started his own small business. This was hilarious. He goes, Keith, I've got this genius idea. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm like, what is it? Because he wasn't the type of guy to full, uh, blow smoke. He goes, dude, it's the most genius business name and idea ever. And now we're in the truck. He's like, are you ready? I'm like, dude, just tell me what it is. He's like, bro, this is genius. I'm like, just tell me. He goes, you ready? <laughs> and this is what he was going to name his business. He's like, bro, I've already got the design. I'm going to pay. I'm going to get the logos. I'm going to get the business cards, the shirts, the, the bumper stickers, the magnets. He was ready to go all in on this business name. He's like, and don't you steal it because this is going to be genius. I go, what is it? Jack of all trades. I know. Fucking genius, bro. Jack, he goes, and I'm, dude, I'm going to have like, you know how they got like the, the playing cards at the casino. It's going to be like a, like a Jack in a spade in the middle. It's going to be called Jack of all trades, bro. Isn't that genius? And I'm sitting there and I was like, I'm driving and I'm like, bro, you do know that's like, he's like, right. I'm like, you do know that's like the worst idea ever. (laughs) He's like, he's like, what? I'm like, that's the stupidest idea ever. (laughs) And he's like, why? And he had no idea. And I was like, I know, like, that's what I was thinking too. When I started, I was like, jack of all trades. Oh my God, we could do it all. I'm going to be rich. (laughs) Now, here's the funny thing. I was on the phone with my friend, David Carroll of Lion Share Maintenance. He's a genius, dude. 
I was on the phone with him. I'm like, bro, we do landscaping, window cleaning, tree service. I got to get rid of some of this shit, man. I can't have guys showing up to work. One minute they're learning how to squeegee. Next minute, motherfucker's jagging branches. And the next minute, he's digging, planting. These guys are going to be confused, man. What did I do here? He's like, no, 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 dog. What you got to do? You got to add more services and train more guys how to do it. So I was like, what? Add more services and train more guys. <laughs> so not everybody's brain works the same. And there is one golden rule. Keep it simple, stupid. If you add anything new before you've really got one thing locked down, you're just opening up Helter Skelter. Because I've done it, bro. I have a funny video on this channel that I actually took down and I made it private. And then I re-released the video. It's called my pressure washing business nightmare story. <laughs> bro, I thought pressure washing was was simple as it looks on the outside. Hell no. Just like window cleaning. People take it for granted. They think it's so easy. Do you need to clean windows for like three, four, five years before you're like really can get in and out of a house or a property really fast? And you've been through every little subtlety. So anyways, thank you so much for your time, my friends. It's been fun. You guys rock. And as well, check the links in the description below. Hit the uh, subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. And I'm going in the house. Later, my friends. Peace out. I'll be putting out some window cleaning vlogs soon. I'm getting the uh, GoPro Hero 7. It should be in the mail right now. I gotta check. Uh, but it's hard to post video content of residential window cleaning too much because going in and out of people's houses, it's it's a little more difficult. I had some videos in the beginning that I took down because I, I was like legit in people's houses, discreetly filming and not showing anything. But I wasn't aware. Like I took all those videos down because, you know, I have a banner service and then segment the services as independent businesses that's interesting i ain't gonna lie like you can look it up we're a five-star agency but i i market the landscaping and window cleaning completely independently from the complete outside so customers that are completely cold traffic who've never heard of us before not warm traffic all of our warm traffic customers and regular clients on the inside all know we do landscaping window cleaning but to completely cold customers like the public, they don't know we do landscaping and window cleaning. They just see us as Kelfus window cleaning or Kelfus landscaping. And then as soon as they get inside, we we know they know that we do both. And I did that on purpose from the beginning because I didn't want to be viewed as a jack of all trades. And I wasn't ever sure if I was going to shut down the landscaping and go all window cleaning or shut down the window cleaning and go all landscaping. So I kind of hedged and protected myself. And it does cost me, it doesn't really cost me any more money in marketing because it, when you add marketing to one channel, you get leads. It, it, when they're both set up efficiently, it doesn't cost me any more money in marketing. And in 2017, I spent $7,000 on marketing. 2018, I spent under two grand in marketing. And then this year, I spend, I plan on spending literally under two grand in marketing. And you might be like, what? That's all you're spending? Like I spend 30, let me know in the comments how much you spend on marketing. I know I'm getting going here, I'm talking again. Dude, I don't know, with us, we have so many phone calls coming in and, and I know you're supposed to go for the type of clients that you want, but God, oh my God. Are, are you getting what, 20, 27 phone calls a day coming in? So. I just think if you have a bigger business like a Matt Smith or something like that, and like you better be aggressively marketing all the time, and he does, you know. And the only reason I think that you should constantly market is because you want to have your pick of the cream of the crop. Hundred thousand, dude. I was talking to my buddy Eric Reno, the roofing guy with the five million dollar roofing business. He said he plans on spending something like a quarter million dollars this year on marketing. <laughs> crazy right uh, a buddy of mine who owns a tree service here in Michigan he said he spent 27,000 one year just on one newspaper ad so this is where average ticket price comes into play you know like what's your customer acquisition cost 
how much do you have to bid on for clicks? How frugal do you have to be with your marketing? And because if you got it like that, if you've got the revenue coming in where you can peel off that percentage, like open up a separate bank account specifically for marketing and advertising, do it. I got one right now with uh, $2,350 in a bank account and specifically for media marketing, right? And so if you if you peel off, let's say you, you peel off 5% of GAR, your, I mean your gross annual revenue and you you're just every single month you're slapping in an account and you're building up a buffer for marketing and let's say it's just 500 bucks a month you know cookie marketing method that's awesome let me know